I think we can officially say that Monger bought Tencent. We're going to get into the reasons why he bought Tencent, in my opinion. And then how did this happen? Who found this out? Because this guy on Twitter really did the research to dig through this and kind of get to the bottom of his holdings. Because we got to remember that Charlie Munger files a 13F filing through the Daily Journal. There's always this one stock that no one knew what it was. It was part of the equity that he held on Daily Journal. And you could see it through the 10 Qs and 10 Ks, but you couldn't find out what that stock was because he actually didn't have to share it. So we're gonna get into this 10 cent purchase in this video. So let's get into it right now. Shout out to Bill on Twitter for actually going through this and finding out that 10 cent is the stock that he owns because he did a lot of research on this. He was using the Daily Journal's 10 Qs to look at the marketable securities. What price is it at at the end of the quarter? It was matching up perfectly with the mystery foreign stock that Daily Journal owned. The prices at every quarter were just perfect. So he hit it on the mark, following it for like a couple of quarters. And he came to the conclusion that it was actually 10 cent. So now I'm gonna guess like, is Charlie Munger following Morris or Morris following Charlie Munger? Which is interesting. And I came up with a video saying that I think that maybe Morris Pabrai sold because the way he talked about Tencent, but maybe he didn't. Did Morris Pabrai follow Charlie into this play or do you think Charlie followed Morris into this play? Because Morris has been saying over and over again that he thinks that Tencent is a way better business than Alibaba because it's capital light, it's more efficient, has two crazy jet engines going at it, has the investment business, and they just have a group of engineers that are doing the right thing and investing in like the right section. And Morris Pabrai and Charlie Munger do talk a lot and they go for dinners. They probably both could have talked about this investment together, just how they probably kind of talked about Baba or they kind of mentioned it. So it's very interesting what this is showing. And this just shows you how bullish Charlie Munger is on China. And we know this because of all the comments he says on China. And he thinks it's just super undervalued because guys, he doesn't swing on a lot of pitches. He makes sure he's investing when he knows it's a home run. So he thinks Tencent and Alibaba are all home runs right now and that they're going to re-rate sooner or later. And you know that he thinks Tencent is the better company just from this, man. He put a 20% weight into it or 18% weight into it, which is insane, man, compared to Alibaba of just 8%, which is crazy. So... He agrees with Morris Pabrai on the fact that it's a better business because if he thought Baba was a better business, he would have put more money into Baba during these downturns, but he's been investing more into Tencent. So he has BYD, Tencent, and Alibaba. That's over 40% of his weight in China. So he's putting a lot of weight there. So he is taking on that risk of, damn, like what can happen in China? He probably doesn't think that the war is really going to happen in the next five years because he wouldn't make this bet if he thought that. He probably thinks that China is going to re-rate because they have so many ways to grow back to where they were back into 2021 where Tencent was like $90, Alibaba was at $300. They're actually starting to focus more on growth. They want their GDP growth to be around like 5% or even more. They're getting rid of the whole zero COVID policy. So that is a huge factor and people are not getting out as much. So they're not getting into different segments. And remember, a lot of Tencent's business is gaming, plus it's fintech division, plus it's advertisement division too. So there's a lot of stuff going. It's social presence. Man, there's a lot to look at for Tencent and its moat, but it can't really do that right now as people are just not as confident in spending, etc., etc. The China-US relations. And he says repeatedly that USA needs China. Like they both need each other. So for them to go separate directions, he doesn't think it's very plausible, even though they're coming to this conclusion right now that, damn, they're fighting, going through this, they're going through that. But at the end of the day, they both need each other, and it's in their best interest to both come to an agreement. And I think he really feels that they will eventually come to an agreement. So this just shows you that he's super bullish on Alibaba, Tencent, and even BYD for the future. So this is amazing to see, because if you just look at the history of Tencent, $95 in 2021, and now it's at $40 pretty much. And since it's lows, it's made a huge run. It made a 50% run, 57% run to $40. And he was buying probably around March 2022. So probably around $50, $51. So it's taken a huge hit from that $51. So if you, if you really believe in China right now, you would buy this company because Tencent is the most dominant. Tencent and Alibaba are the two most dominant 
companies in China with crazy moats that are still generating a lot of profit. So if you believe the earnings growth into the future is going to continue, then I think it's a perfect buy at these prices. But if you think the China risk is just way too unpredictable, this company has like no future because you don't know what the Chinese government is going to do to this company. Guys, then avoid this at all costs. But I'm seeing the opposite. I believe in these two companies. I own them as well. So guys, tell me what you think about Charlie Munger's new purchase of Tencent or maybe his old purchase of Tencent. But we just came to realize what it really was, guys. So like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll get back to you in the next video.